Welcome to Where Parents Talk. My name is Leanne Castellino. Our guest today is an international thought leader in gambling, adolescence, and behavioral addictions. His research and expertise have informed and affected government policy change. Dr. Jeff Derevensky is chair and James McGill professor in the Faculty of Education at McGill University and a professor in the Department of Psychiatry. He's also the director of the International Center for Youth Gambling Problems and High Risk Behaviors. Dr. Derevensky joins us today from Montreal. Thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to share what knowledge we have with your audience. And you have been on the front lines of studying and researching this topic for decades. So, Dr. Derevinsky, what concerns you most about the prevalence of sports betting and online gambling as we see it today? Well, we know that gambling in general has changed dramatically in the last two decades. Uh, We've gone, as you mentioned, much more towards online gambling. And now in Canada and across the U.S., as well as internationally, sports wagering has now really taken off. Uh, In Canada, the government has said it's no longer part of the criminal code. It's left the provinces to decide whether or not they would like to uh, engage in sports wagering. Uh, And the same thing is true in the United States, where they revised their national standards and state after state after state is now adopting sports wagering. We should mention that depending on where you live in Canada, the uh, legal age to engage in gambling is either 18 or 19, depending on the province you live in. Dr. Derevinsky, is there a particular statistic that you can share on this topic that you really think should give us all pause? Well, I think what's really important uh, for your audience is when we think about gambling or gambling problems, We typically view that as an adult activity, yet we know the prevalence of adults with gambling problems, or we now call them gambling disorders, is anywhere roughly between 1% and 2%. When you look at younger people, those adolescents, we find anywhere between 3% and 4% are having significant gambling-related problems. And then if you take the 18 year old adults and look at those people 18 to 25, they are amongst the highest prevalence of gambling problems uh, within the general range of adults. So in terms of those statistics, um, as it pertains to adolescents and young adults, where does gambling addiction, let's call it, fall within the sort of the range of other behavioral addictions in that age group? So gambling uh, is one of the highest prevalence rates of potential behavioral addictions that we can have. And uh, the American Psychiatric Association and the World Health Organization have now not only endorsed gambling as behavioral addiction, but they now, the World Health Organization now looks at gaming as a potential problem. And what we've seen over the last decade is emerging between gambling and gaming. And most parents allow their children to play video games online whatever think, without ever thinking that this is actually gambling. So for parents listening or watching to this interview who may be people that fall into that category of not really knowing what their kids are doing online, they don't have time to pay attention, et cetera, et cetera, What is a reasonable starting point for them to look into and prevent proactively a bigger problem from arising around gambling addiction? I think one of the important things for parents to understand is that children will, (laughs) excuse me, will often start gambling amongst their family members. And many parents will purchase a lottery scratch ticket for their children as a Christmas gift or as a special gift for graduation without ever thinking about that as a real problem going forward. Yet we know that the earlier people start gambling, the earlier young people start gambling, the greater the likelihood that they will have a problem. 
And we know that one of the big risk factors for a gambling problem is what we call an early big win. So if a young child has gotten a scratch off ticket from their parents and they scratch it and they win $50, well, that may not sound like a lot of money to you or I, but to a young child, that is a lot of money. And that that enables the young person to keep wanting to play those types of games. Uh, during the Christmas holidays, we have an international campaign, along with the National Council on Problem Gambling in the U.S., that goes right across Canada, right across the United States, and in many countries around the world, urging parents not to purchase lottery tickets for their young children. And that campaign has been very, very successful in trying to minimize the harms associated with gambling. When you talk about an early age, what are we talking about here? Well, we know that young people or even adults, if you ask them when they started gambling, they will tell you often when they were nine and 10 years of age. They don't walk into a casino and gamble. Uh, and historically, they hadn't gambled online, although now we're starting to see, <coughs> excuse me, more young people gambling online. But they do start gambling and they often gamble with their parents and parents are completely unaware that their children are gambling. Uh, I had a mom who called me one day at the, our center and said I was putting my child's T-shirts away and I found $500 worth of lottery scratch tickets in his drawer. Do you think that's a problem? And yes, that is a, a problem. In August of 2021, it became legal to bet or gamble on single sports events in Canada. Can you tell us what has been the impact of that federal government decision? Well, basically what's happened is the federal government no longer included that as part of the criminal code. And they then allowed the provinces to decide on their own whether or not they would like to incorporate uh sports wagering either online or in land-based venues or casino venues. And what we've seen is the vast majority of provinces across this country have adopted uh, sports wagering. When people say who's most addicted to gambling, I often say, look at the government. They're addicted to the revenues that are being generated. The amounts of money that are being generated for government are in fact astronomical. This is not just here in Canada, but also the United States and worldwide. It's hard to listen to the radio, watch TV, and not hear an advertisement for exactly what you're talking about, sports betting and online gambling. What do you think has attributed to those two items becoming so socially acceptable? Well, I, I think uh, part of it is that the government has said gambling is socially acceptable. And in many provinces, the gambling operations are owned and run by the provinces themselves. Sports wagering has been popular for decades. Uh, this is not new. What's new is that it's now legal to actually wager on sports in different provinces. So what we've noticed is that many government agencies now would like to regulate the sports wagering. And in order to do that, some of them have uh, allowed other private enterprises to come in and operate the sports wagering. And what we've seen is that these companies are spending hundreds of millions of dollars advertising because what they want you to do is they want you to sign up for their website. And as an incentive, they will often give you free money in order to wager on sports. Along those lines, uh, we see lots of sports celebrities in particular, both uh, currently, um, you know, in their sport and, and and sort of veterans of their sport. Uh, Wayne Gretzky comes to mind, yeah. Connor McDavid, et cetera. What is the impact of using these types of celebrities and names to promote sports betting and online gambling? Yeah, I mean, we're very concerned about that. Uh, we're concerned because we know these are, athletes or former athletes who young people have looked up to. And they will sell lots of products 
over the internet. They will sell lots of products online. And as a result, many young people will actually want to emulate and adhere to what they're suggesting. Uh, the Ontario government is now looking at whether or not these people should be allowed to do this. Uh, what's interesting to me as well is you don't see any sports celebrities, and many of them have their own gambling problems, say advocating non-gambling or restraining their gambling, or in terms of trying to develop more effective what psychologists refer to as harm minimization procedures. So what should a parent do, uh, you know, again, if they suspect now that their child may have uh, some kind of problem with, with this online betting and gambling? Well, I, I mean, the good news on many of these sites for young people, adolescents in particular, is that you really need a credit card in order to gamble. Uh, and most young people don't have a credit card or adolescents typically don't have a credit card until they get older and then they may go off to university. But what parents should be doing is making sure that their children are not being encouraged to gamble, that we're not giving them lottery tickets. We're not, get, we're not encouraging them to use our credit cards, which many parents will do, in order for ch children to actually uh, gamble on sports. And I think we should also be monitoring our children, watching what they're doing.